It's inevitable. If you've got a pet, eventually it's going to get sick, break a bone, or you know, otherwise just be unhealthy. From major issues to minor cuts and scrapes, it's really just part of life. Our fish and coral that live in our reef tanks are no different. They grow and get sick just like everything else that we might have. And when it does, sometimes it's really hard for us to tell what's going on. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this is what to do when it all goes wrong. First and foremost, don't treat what you can't identify. Just like with dosing chemicals where you shouldn't dose something that you don't test for, you shouldn't make a big change or add medication to your tank unless you know exactly what's going on. Your first line of defense, the safest thing that you can always do, is water changes. Right off the bat, if your water is cloudy, throw an air stone into the tank to change the water. You might be able to change the water multiple times, but get the water replaced. You want the air stone because a cloudy tank is often a sign of a bacterial bloom, and those are known to reduce oxygen levels so much that it's going to kill any remaining fish and coral that you might have otherwise been able to save. Sick fish are often treatable. If you can see a fluffy bit of something growing on them, they might very well have an infection of some sort. If you can see a little dusting of white spots, they might have marine ick. If they're breathing heavily, not swimming around like normal, maybe your oxygen level is too low, or maybe they've got an infection in their gills and they can't breathe. The point is, when it comes to disease in our tanks, fish are relatively easy. Use your phone, take the clearest photo that you can, or maybe even a short video, get a nice close shot, and then post it on your favorite reef forum. People are going to be able to help you figure out what it might be, and you'll often be able to treat it with medications right in your reef tank. Sometimes, though, you might need to remove the fish from the tank because some treatments are going to kill other things like your invertebrates and coral, but, you know, it's not that hard, and you can even use a five-gallon bucket as a short-term treatment tank. Coral, Necropora, things like that, on the other hand, often hide this disease unless you know exactly what to look for. The world of infectious disease in coral is much less researched than in fish, and we're really just beginning to explore the things that can affect them. Knowing what your corals normally look like, you know, polyp extension, if they expand at night, things like that, that can really key you into issues before they become a big problem. But at the end, you're still left with a sick coral. There's not really much that we can do for a sick Acropora. We really just don't know enough about the diseases to safely treat most of them. After a recent trip to the Amazon rainforest, I came home to find a couple of my Acropora bleaching. My millipora just have not been doing well in general since then, and a few of my coral are still in a pretty critical condition. So what have I done to try and, you know, not have these coral die? Well, the first thing I did was to test all of my water. Was maybe something out of the normal range? Maybe there was a big alkalinity swing? Nothing turned up. To test more deeply, I sent some water to Triton to get a test run. Everything was green. So there's nothing wrong with the water chemistry in general. That means there's no reason to change anything. Whatever is hurting these corals is specific to them and only them, and it doesn't seem to be spreading. I redoubled my efforts to give them the best possible care, standard things like Acropower amino acid, uh, feeding live baby brine shrimp, uh, ensuring things like light and temperature are in the right ranges. In my case, that just improved daily care slowed the bleaching, but as you can see, these corals are far from out of danger, and it's been a couple months now. We'll see how they do, but I'm not going to make any major changes to try to fix this. As you can see, other corals, even those that are an inch or two away, are doing just fine. And I don't want to hurt the rest of my tank just trying to save these sick corals. That's really the key to all of this. Test everything. Make sure you know there is actually a problem before you try to fix the problem. Oftentimes, people make the situation worse by changing a whole bunch of stuff all at once, and that just stresses the rest of your corals, the rest of your fish, and then you lose everything instead of a single coral. Sometimes animals get sick and die. It's unfortunate, and we always hate to see it happen, but it happens. It'll happen in your tank too. It's life. So you know, what tips can you share with us if you notice a sick coral bleaching out or maybe a sick fish? Let us know in the comments down below. We can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Remember to test before you change anything at all. Test your water and have a great day. Bye.